Hey doc, I have a problem. I am addicted to a very special type of porn, which I have not seen in anyone before. And I believe you're the only one who can help me. Hear me out. Please don't get weirded out and hang up the phone. I really need your help. So this is the case. I am in the US Army and I live in Afghanistan. There are no girls here at the army base. I am addicted to porn. Just yesterday, I was in my truck and finally I got promoted so I have my own truck and there's no one next to me and I can do my own projects. I had to masturbate to porn on my phone while I was in the driver's seat and I was stopped for an assignment. And I came really fast because I was afraid one of the other officers will catch me. But that's not the actual issue, Doc. What's happening is that I have recently created a fake Facebook account of a hot blonde girl. And what I do is I message other hot girls that I see on Facebook and I share with them the stories of me fucking a big black dick. Better yet, me getting fucked by a big black dick in the ass. So I befriend these girls on Facebook pretending to be a hot blonde girl even though I am a middle-aged American guy who is in the US Army in Afghanistan. And I do that because I am addicted to the Facebook messages that I get from those girls who tell me how amazing it is to get fucked in the ass by big black boners. And as I'm reading these messages on Facebook, I'm masturbating. I'm addicted to that, Doc. I've created this Facebook profile for months now and all I'm doing in my free time is messaging these girls on Facebook and I'm telling them my fake stories of my sex anecdotes and, and my sex escapades. And as they open up to me, because they see my profile of this hot blonde girl, they want to be my friend. And they tell me the real stories, the real sex escapades that they're going on in their life and I'm getting so turned on by that that I'm masturbating, coming fast and doc. Recently what I found is that when I do masturbate, I am not able to get hard. My testosterone is very low. I got it checked recently. I did a blood test. The girl that I am banging I see her once every six months. Doc, please help me solve my porn-induced erectile dysfunction, my porn-induced premature ejaculation, my porn addiction, my low testosterone problems, my guilt, my shame, my energy and focus issues, my masculinity issues, Please, Doc, help me because now I'm losing my libido, my performance even to porn, and I miss my rock hard erections. Doc, please help me. This is one of my one on one coaching clients who I used to coach through Skype. Now, I'm not going to reveal the identity of this person because we keep everything confidential. But I'm allowed to tell you the story of this person because I want you to understand how serious porn-induced erectile dysfunction is and how serious the porn industry takes how much money they make, how well they are off in technology and virtual reality. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about porn addiction, porn-induced erectile dysfunction, about my own porn addiction for over 20 years, 
how I overcame that porn addiction. I'm going to tell you stories of other clients that have suffered in their masculinity because of watching porn for year after year after year. This is a very emotional video for me and that is why I wore all black. I want to go all out here. I want to be very, very transparent, very authentic and tell you things that I've never told anyone before. Now again, I'm keeping everything confidential because I will never ever reveal names of people. But I want to give you details because I want you to understand the reality of what is happening in the world today. The reality of how the porn industry, other industries like the food industry, the pharmaceutical industry are destroying the masculinity of men in the world today. And we're going to take our masculinity back. We're going to get the hard fucking rock erections that we deserve. The sex freak animalistic libido that as a man you should have. The sex performance of a sex god that you should have. All of that will be covered in this video and I will also cover the neuroscience of porn addiction how to use neuroscience, how I used my neuroscience background to overcome my porn addiction and helped countless one-on-one -on -one coaching clients to overcome their porn addiction. So, before I reveal the first truth of today, there will be several truths that I'm going to reveal. Before I reveal the first one, I just want to tell you, uh, in yesterday's video, I talked about my cum shots in the first part of the video. Today, I had this crazy sperm volume <laughs> and I got called, are you some kind of sex god by my girlfriend? Now the amount of happiness and joy and ecstasy I feel going from a guy who was addicted to porn for 20 years, masturbated, came in 30 seconds because he was shameful and had a lot of guilt because his parents were going to catch him to today becoming someone who my girlfriend calls a sex god. Yesterday, I thought I was empty when I just came like crazy all over her and all over the bed and all over her tits and all over inside her mouth. Today, I had this amazing cum volume. And I was shocked because I was thinking I was empty yesterday and overnight I produced all this sperm. If I, being a testosterone expert and a testosterone student at the same time for life and a doctor, if I can surprise myself with my sexuality, even though I'm so aware of my body and what is happening, that is fantastic. And I want to keep surprising myself and my abilities and my skills. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to overcome your porn addiction. I want you to understand the harms of porn. I want you to understand what is going on in your brain. So you can not only overcome your porn addiction, but you can overcome any addiction that you have by following the same techniques, the same methodology that I have used and my countless clients have used to overcome their not just porn addiction, but video game addiction, social media addiction, sugar addiction, gambling addiction, and other addictions that men have in the world today. Truth number one, porn is the enemy. Masturbation is not. Men have been masturbating for millennia for probably hundreds of thousands of years we've been masturbating. It's natural. You become horny, you want to discharge, you want to take your cum out, then you masturbate. But porn is very new. And porn is very harmful to masculinity. Now let me tell you what porn actually does to your brain. The porn stimulus, the big tits, big ass, the having sex for hours, which is all fake, all of that is what is known as a supranormal stimulus. It is something that is above normal. 
when you see things that are not natural, like the big tits and big ass and the different fetishes that you see in porn, your brain thinks of that as real. Now, the reason your brain thinks of it as real is because your brain doesn't really know the difference between a video image and a real 3D image that you see around you in life, like trees and, and your girlfriend and just you know a forest or a plant or a food, things that are natural. Your brain doesn't really know the difference. Now, the other interesting thing that we found out, again, by we, I mean neuroscientists, my colleagues, and other people in the world who study the brain. When we found out about mirror neurons, we had an earth shattering, so this revolutionized neuroscience. Now, what are mirror neurons? So I'm gonna tell you about mirror neurons and I'm gonna tell you how they relate to porn and why you're addicted to porn. Mirror neurons were discovered by this lab in Italy. And what happened is they were recording from a monkey. So, you know, a monkey had an electrode in his brain and that's what I used to do when I was doing my PhD. And the monkey was being given things by the lab assistant. For example, a banana to eat or an apple to eat or something to manipulate with his hands. They were studying the motor cortex of the brain where we study how things like our hands are moving, our feet are moving. This is what the motor cortex does. It gives instructions to our body parts to move. So as they were studying these areas of the motor cortex, they started having an area fire, not when the monkey was performing an action, but when the lab technician was performing an action. So instead of the monkey grabbing the banana or the monkey grabbing an object, these neurons started firing when the lab assistant grabbed the banana or grabbed the object. And the scientists were perplexed because they said, how can the motor cortex, the area of the brain which fires when the monkey moves, how can that move when a lab technician is moving? And that is how mirror neurons were discovered. These neurons fire in our brain when we see from our eyes other people doing an action and we know how to do that action. We've seen that action before. Our body knows that action through evolution and we think we are doing it. This is the secret to why a lot of us men are addicted to watching sports why fantasy football is so much of a billion dollar business and why sports teams and sports players make so much money. Because when you're watching Tom Brady or Michael Jordan on TV and Brady's throwing a touchdown pass or Jordan's hitting, hitting that game winning shot or nowadays LeBron James and, and others, it's because your body, your brain believes that it is you who's throwing that touchdown pass or throwing uh, or, or scoring that game winning field goal or scoring that game winning shot in basketball. Or nowadays we have the World Cup going on, scoring that goal to win the game. Your brain thinks you're doing that. Now in porn, when you're watching this guy just like going at it and fucking a girl for hours, which is again, fake, you believe you're having sex with her. Your brain, your body believes that you're the one having the sex. And the supranormal stimuli, which are the big tits, big ass, different types of fetishes, your brain thinks you are involved in that. Now, when you get to have sex with your girlfriend or with your wife or with some girl or some guy, if you're gay, for example, your brain thinks that that porn is real. The dopamine that is released in the reward centers of your brain or those centers of your brain that anticipate reward, you want that same dopamine rush, that same amount of dopamine, the receptors getting all that dopamine. You want that and you expect that. You're used to that. So now, when you see a normal person, a good looking girl or a really hot girl, but not a photoshopped girl like an Instagram or a girl who had surgery done on her to get these big tits, 
your brain doesn't get the dopamine that it used to get during porn. Those receptors don't get the binding that they used to get when you were watching porn. So sometimes you don't ejaculate. A lot of my clients, especially this one guy who was complaining that he could never come with his girlfriend. So he would have to watch porn at the end of his session to actually ejaculate. And his girlfriend did not like that. No girlfriend or wife or any partner for that matter would like that you need to watch porn to get horny enough, to get turned on enough to actually ejaculate. Your woman will not like that. That is not what a real man needs. That is not what masculinity entails. So when I hear that from my coaching clients, that they need to watch porn at the end of their sexual session to ejaculate, I wonder, what is nature doing to these men? What is nature doing to you? If you have delayed ejaculation, think about it. Now again, this is speculation. This is not some scientific study. I'm telling you from my own experience here. If you have delayed ejaculation, from the viewpoint of nature, nature knows your hormonal imbalance. Nature knows what is going on in your physiology. Nature doesn't want you to become a father. Nature doesn't want you to have a kid because you don't deserve it. Think about it. Nature is holding your ejaculation because it doesn't want you to impregnate a woman. It doesn't want your genes to get passed on. So you can't come when naturally you should. Same thing with premature ejaculation. Nature doesn't want you to impregnate a girl because as you're fucking her, before you actually penetrate, you come. So you're never going to be able to enter a pussy. Because remember, pussies aren't just open. Like you have to fuck it. Like you have to go inside that thing, right? Like you have to make that pussy wet. You might have to finger her. You might have to go fucking at it and eat out her pussy. And now it becomes wet. So if you become exhausted before penetration, your dick will never be hard. What used to happen to me is I would lick the hell out of a girl and she would love my oral sex. Then I would finger her a bit to get a feel of the pussy and I would get so exhausted, my energy would be so drowned that when I started the penetration, I would go limp and I could not go inside her. And sometimes I would just ejaculate soft. Nature doesn't, did not, nature did not want me to have a kid at that point because I was not a real man. Now, I'm not saying premature ejaculation is a disease. Not at all. Actually, premature ejaculation is not a disease. You can get a woman aroused and get her multiple orgasms without putting your dick inside her. You could do that from a hundred different ways. And if you want me to, post in the Facebook group and I'll make an entire truth about how to do that. But if you already know how to do that, then I don't need to educate you. But... Porn will kill you. It'll kill your masculinity. Because if you don't have your masculinity, what the fuck do you have? When I was living in Vegas, we would have these adult porn conferences where all the porn companies like Pornhub, and Brazzers, and uh, Large Porn Tube, and all, I know all of those guys, by the way. They would come and show us these virtual reality rooms that they've programmed. You can put a helmet on your head and you could... It would be like you're fucking some girl inside a bar and it would feel so real. The porn industry is at the forefront, at the beginning of those gates of technology because they have a lot of money. Hundreds of billions of dollars are made by the porn industry. So all that money is being spent getting you addicted to porn. And you're giving in. You're giving up. You're becoming less of a man. You're becoming emasculated. If you want to reverse all this, then keep paying attention to this video and I'm going to get into how exactly to overcome your porn addiction. Now, one thing I mentioned earlier is 
porn addiction versus masturbation. Masturbation is totally fine. If you're masturbating to your girlfriend, imagining your girlfriend, imagining a girl you saw that day that you didn't talk to or that you didn't fuck, or you're imagining your wife, you're on vacation and you can't see your wife, you FaceTime with her and you're masturbating to her. When I was in New York City, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago before I came to Stockholm, I was masturbating to Melanie all the time, sometimes in front of her. That's healthy because that's your girl. There is no supranormal stimuli. Even though I think her beauty is very supranormal. But physically, it's not an unnatural stimuli that you're looking at. So keep that difference in mind all the time. Don't ever feel guilty about masturbating to your girlfriend or some girl you met live and you masturbating to her in the shower. That's totally fine. It's actually recommended. But again, go get the girlfriend so you can physically have sex with her instead of just imagining her in your head. All right? Now, let me tell you another interesting thing that you may not know about the science and what's happening in the brain. The reason men back in the day in the 40s and 50s and 60s weren't having porn-induced erectile dysfunction is because they were masturbating to magazines. They were masturbating to things they saw just in a book or our ancestors masturbating to cave images and hieroglyphic images in the Greek times and the Syrian times and way back in the day in the Hindu times. All of that was not with a frame rate that is so high that we see today. What do I mean by that? When you watch a video, the frame rate or the amount of velocity or the speed at which these frames are being shown to you in a, in a movie, the refresh rate of, your, of the movie that you're watching, the fact that you can see 60 frames in a second, the fact that you can see so many things and your brain is processing so many images all at once, so many pictures all at once, which is what you call a movie. Because of the way your brain is seeing that, the stimulus is so strong that your brain interprets that very different from interpreting an image in a book or in a Playboy magazine. So back in the day in the 30s and 40s when guys were masturbating to Playboy magazines, there was no erectile dysfunction because the things they saw in their girlfriend, you know, the Playboy girl might have big tits, big ass. And again, the surgeries weren't as crazy as they are today. They were, you know, just a little bit above average. Now it's pretty nuts. And with the movies, the porn movies that you're watching, and even the Instagram small movies that you're watching, and the Instagram images that you're watching, that's very, very different. It's photoshopped. Those guys that fuck those girls for hours in porn, it's not real. It's like eight, nine different scenes into one that you think is one sex session, and it's not. These guys are injecting stuff into their dicks so they can remain hard. They've ruined their lives. Do not give in to that. Do not play into that. It's all a fake mirage that they've created for you. All right? Now, now I've mentioned that porn-induced erectile dysfunction is real. A lot of the guys that have messaged me, a lot of the guys in the Facebook group that we have, the Testosterone Truth group, a lot of guys that I get DMs from on Instagram, a lot of emails that I've received, my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, a lot of them, their main issue is porn addiction. That's why this video is so long. I want to cover everything here. Now, I mentioned my army friend who lived in Afghanistan and belonged to the US Army, who I was doing coaching with. The way I helped him overcome his porn addiction, his specific Facebook message porn addiction, which was the first time I'd ever heard of that, I had him replace the bad habit of porn with good habits. When he did his test results and he got his vitamin D back and saw that it was deficient, very, very low vitamin D levels, very low zinc levels, very, very low testosterone. And this guy didn't look skinny. He was jacked, like he was very fit guy. That's what was interesting. Like it's an army guy, army official, looks good, 
but is addicted to porn and his masculinity is just horseshit. The way I helped him overcome his porn addiction is by replacing that bad habit with things like working out really hard, meditation. He got into investing in the stock market. He got into doing angel investing, got into forex trading and I helped him get into all of that stuff because I wanted him to get his brain circuitry that is wired for addiction. All of us are. I wanted him to get addicted to working out. I wanted him to get addicted to understanding the stock market, studying foreign exchange trading, understanding what is happening with tech companies so he can become a smart angel investor. So I got him addicted to all of that good stuff. And that is how he overcame his porn addiction. So for you, remember, this is how it works. This is the power of habit book that if you haven't read by Charles Duhigg, this is what the neuroscience research shows. A habit consists of three parts the cue or the trigger, the routine or the action, and the reward or what you are getting in terms of your dopamine spike. For him, the trigger was opening up Facebook. The routine was masturbating to those Facebook messages. And the reward was that last bit of fun the orgasm, the ejaculation, the coming. Now, what happened? The coming, the orgasm is just brain circuitry. It's just a, something that happens in your brain, in the reward centers of your brain, the arousal centers of your brain. And you get an orgasm. The cue or the trigger is the Facebook, the actual icon of the F that he saw on his computer. So guess what? Whenever he saw that Facebook icon, he did the activities that I prescribed for him, like going to work out, doing his foreign exchange trading. Now, I could not tell him to go pick up girls because he's at an army base, so we had to do with what we had. And that orgasmic feel that he got from ejaculation and what he was doing on Facebook, he got that through the activities that he did. He got that orgasmic feeling whenever he got the dopamine spike from an amazing stock exchange, an amazing trade, or an amazing company that he invested in that made a billion dollars. That's what I want you to understand. You have to replace your bad habit of porn with good habits that will do amazing for you. Listen, man. If you're struggling with porn addiction, you're not alone. I've gone through it and I am a crazy hard case. I started when I was 12 years old. I did not have a girlfriend until now. I'm having the best sex of my life. I'm amazing now because of my high testosterone, because I can get rock hard boners, because I can last long because I can control my breathing, because now I am what a man should be. You might think of me, or a lot of men might think of me as some crazy masculine sex freak wizard, but I'm just a normal guy. I'm like you and you can be like me, but you have to take those steps. And let me tell you another thing, man. Get that girlfriend, man. Get that girl to have sex with every day, to have love with every day. It's so much better than porn. A fucking trillion times better. A gazillion times better. I beg you, get a girl. <laughs> and now you're gonna say, how? I don't know how to approach. And One of my other coaching clients, he had this issue. He was addicted to porn. And he felt very ashamed, a lot of guilt approaching girls. So during our Skype call, I had him go to the mall and he approached 30 girls within one hour and I was on the phone with him. And then I was his personal wingman on the phone and when he would talk to the girl, he would introduce me and I would talk to the girl, tell her about this guy who's wonderful, he's an amazing dude, he's a personal trainer, works at a gym, a really good gym, and he does a lot of different types of martial arts. He's a really, really great dude. 
but he was addicted to porn. And now he's not. He overcame his porn addiction. How? Because I had him replace that routine with going to approach women, going out there and taking those risks that you see in porn. The guy takes a risk, you know, he chokes the girl, shoves her into the wall, even though she's his boss or his secretary. That risk in your brain, your brain just needs to have circuitry for risk. Your brain doesn't fucking know what risk is. That's consciousness. Your brain doesn't know that. Your brain is just electricity and chemicals. You have to just give it the right electricity and chemicals, the right synapses, change your brain, neuroplasticity. This is how you do it. Your brain, when it experiences that going out, talking to girls, working out, meditating, replacing that one bad habit of porn with five good habits, and getting that same reward, that same orgasm, that's how you will become unaddicted to porn. And that's how my coaching client is now not addicted to porn anymore and has a girlfriend. And is fucking her really well. And I'm very proud of him. Let me give you a caveat to NoFap. A lot of you guys are doing NoFap. Here's one problem, and this is a truth of NoFap. If you do NoFap for too long, the principle of use it or lose it will kick in. And this has happened to me. When I started NoFap, I did it for a while, for months and months and months, and my dick became limp. This is years and years ago when I was experimenting with all these protocols that I heard about NoFapping. So don't just be on NoFap for six months because your dick might stop working. There are muscles in your pelvic floor known as PC muscles. And there are other muscles there too. Your ass muscles, your perineum. There's different things that are near your pelvic floor, like your prostate is there, for example. Your, the male G-spot is there also. You don't want those muscles to become weak. One way to make those muscles strong is by doing Kegel exercises. And I'm going to get into Kegel exercises and more things about how to have good sex in a later video about the truth about having good sex and about being vulnerable and about being true to your girlfriend and just being very good at communication and expressing yourself in a masculine way where you own your insecurities. I'm going to get to that in another truth video. But today I just want to tell you that don't go on NoFap for too long. There are a lot of experts in our Facebook group, me included, who have done a lot of NoFap training, a lot of being celibate and abstaining from sex to do these experiments. But don't go on NoFap for too long because if you lose the tone in those PC muscles, then you will be limp. You will have massive erectile dysfunction. So there are negative effects of NoFap as well. Okay, now, in order for me to help you with your NoFap journey, I would have to ask you a bunch of questions. I can't just help you here in this video. But NoFap does work. Those dopamine receptors that get deteriorated because there's so much binding to that dopamine in those reward centers of the brain that now the receptors are malfunctioned. These receptors are no more. Because if you keep using these receptors, they become saturated and now you need more dopamine to satisfy that binding. If you want to get those receptors back, NoFap is the way. It might take two years. It might take three months of NoFapping and then going on a phase where you make your muscles strong again, then relax again. There are different protocols you can follow. And I will help you with those protocols post on the Facebook group. And I'm going to get to the challenge in terms of exactly what to post. But keep these caveats and nuances in mind. Don't just listen to some YouTube asshole or some other person on the internet who tells you about no fap. There is no one cookie cutter solution. It has to be customized to you. And when we get into the webinar, I'm going to tell you exactly how I can help you do that, how to overcome your porn addiction in a customized way. So make sure you've signed up for the webinar that's coming up. If you haven't, do it right now. It is in the membership site and you can get access to that webinar. Again, that webinar is also free, as is this entire course. 
I want you to come out with the naked truth about your porn addiction to our Facebook group. Come out naked, man. I mean, look at me. I've told you everything about me. I tell you about my relationships. I tell you very, very personal information. I've already shown you how to do it. Now it is your chance to do it. Yesterday, one of the guys in the Facebook group, you'll see when you go there, he recorded a 30 minute video about his journey of masculinity and how the stuff I've done has helped him. And now he's helping others through being vulnerable and being real. Today's challenge is for you to make a video. Don't be ashamed. Don't have guilt. I want to see that in your face. Make a video, man. And tell us about your porn addiction journey if you have one. If you don't, tell us about your sex journey. Tell us about what is happening with your libido, your erection quality, your sex performance, your cum shots. Be real with your sex life. If your sex life is with yourself and your dick, tell us about that. Be real. We are a family. I'm challenging you to be authentic and real today. This is the only way you're going to get anything done. Be real, be vulnerable. Because if you can't be real and vulnerable with your brothers in the Testosterone Truth family, how can you be real and vulnerable with your girl, with your future girl, or with your current girl? Practice with us. You have this platform. That's the challenge for today. That's the truth for today. I will see you tomorrow.